Here we are again for another eBay uh, rescue. This is a Triang um, 100 ton tanker, um, R117 if you're interested, and it's a, a Canadian model. Um, I think it's still double O, um, measured the wheels and they look the same, but uh, I'm not sure if it's H. Maybe someone in uh, Canada will, let, will know and uh, maybe leave a comment down below. Anyway, so um, always a dilemma with saying of this age, because this is, you know, knocking on 60 years old, whether to actually do anything with it or just, you know, clean it up and sell it back. Um, but it is damaged, so I think we're going to, um, well, we definitely are going to do a number on it. So, um, first thing we're going to need to do is take it apart because it is um, it's a bit grotty. There's lots of uh, DNA and bits of carpet underneath. You can just see the underneath the tank there. So we'll take it apart as best we can and give it a clean in some soapy water, and that will give us a good base to start with. That one's not going to come off. Um, it's probably glued on, so we'll, look, we'll have a look at that. We'll take the tank off. These come off the same as the smaller sort of SO type um, tankers that you can get as well. These just clip on at the end. Just need to pull the ladder back a little bit gently. They're already broken the ladder. Um, I was thinking about replacing it, maybe putting a new one in resin, but um, but I won't. It's just gonna. It's, it's an old model, and it's it's gonna look like an old truck anyway. Uh, so yeah, there's a bit of grot under there. We need to clean that off. Um, apart from that, it's not too bad. The decals have uh, had a couple of little knocks. Yeah, time for wash soapy water. So uh, it broke. Well, I think it was already um, broken anyway, but I might be able to get along a little bit, unfortunately. So I need to just patch this up with a bit of super glue, um, and that will, uh, that will look after that. The paintwork is going to cover this up anyway, I'm sure. Give that a couple of minutes and that'll be uh, as good as. Uh, now the bogies are, they, this is metal, um, and there's quite a bit of detail on them, but it is full of um, carpet and hair and who knows. So I want to get as much as I can out because the um, the new paintwork will, will show that up a little bit. So I don't want, um, too much dirt in there and the couplers are they're bent on both ends so we're just going to straighten those up just to make it look a bit more respectable and a bit more usable if anybody wants to put it back on their track they bend quite easy just be careful they sometimes they obviously just snap off so I've decided just to um, we're gonna make this a, a little a rusty one of course um, but I wanted to just uh, Sort of pick some lines out to really uh, sort of accentuate the, the panels, especially where the brake was. So um, do bear with me while the camera gets back into focus. But we're just going to mask around the uh, those two end portions where those lines of the rivets are. We'll do the same on the other half as well. And I'm just going to mask the middle piece off, just so we don't get any overspray. If I get um, a little bit carried away and gung ho with the with the airbrush. Oh, this was the last time that I used my blunt scalpel. I've since got some new blades. You'll be pleased to hear. Um, so that's uh, that's all good. Now I'm just going to go around the edge with this bright orange rust. Uh, it looks a bit strange here. Um, this is a model air, so it's quite a thin um, colour. But it's just going to just sort of accent these these joins uh, as if there's some rust poking through. And then underneath those, uh, the, the sort of waistline, I suppose there's probably a bar there normally, isn't there? But underneath the waistline, what you're going to do is a similar thing, just a line of rust, just to kind of accent it a little bit. Did 
debate whether I was going to do this. Um, but in the end I decided that um, it's not going to show a tremendous amount in the end. By the time we get the rest of the rust and the, the grime on, it's not going to show a lot, but it's there. Um, for where it does sort of poke through, you, you'll see something. It will just, just accent it, as I say, just do a little bit more. So rather than masking it with uh, with tape, I've just uh, held this piece of um, this piece of card from a magazine. Just hold it against it, and it just gives me um, a relatively straight edge. And I'm going to go over that a few more times, I think, just to make it a bit brighter. As you see there, so just a bit more noticeable. Okay, so we'll take the masking off, and then we'll uh, we'll carry on. Now at this point I did again decide whether I want to keep that with that rust. Um, I did uh, contemplate cleaning it off but I left it anyway. So you might remember on the um, right at the beginning when it was already on uh, like that there was a line of dirt underneath just there um, and where it had been handled it kind of worn away and it looked quite a nice sort of organic sort of shape so we're going to try and recreate that. So it looks like the mud has uh, come up from the bottom over the many years it's been on the track and uh, it's going to have that sort of dark muddy um, yeah lower half so we're using here this is um, dark red this is red earth I think um, I'll put the link down below for this one but yes my uh, one of my my regulars looks very bright when we uh, when we when it's on it's a model air color so it will um, it will dry darker. I'm just going to go up, just up to the waistline. Um, some of this is going to get cleaned back in a minute anyway. So the main thing is to get the real bits at the bottom completely covered um, because that's the bit that we want to have the real muddy effect. Going to clean this off, so we need to um, work fairly quick. Um, I want to do the same on the on the chassis here as well. Just really those top services, because when the uh, when the tank goes back on, they're not going to be accessible. So I want to do those and those um, supports that hold the tank in place. Need me to get, grab around the sides of those to make sure they're all coloured in. It's going to be fairly dark underneath here anyway, but we may as well um, try and give it a coat while the, while the tank is off. into place like so and then the paint is still um, it's soft it's not actually wet but it is soft and it will come off with a little bit of effort and we're just going to clean it off as if um, as if the, the elements the rain as the tanks being rolling down the track uh, the rain would have washed some of the dirt away and people would have brushed by when they've clambered up on the tank or they maybe even trying to give it a clean which is unlikely but those sort of um, that sort of swag the way that line sort of dips up and down uh, I quite like that so that's kind of what I'm trying to copy but rather than in um, carpet and bits of dead skin from the, uh, from the original model we're going to try and emulate that in mud
so it looks a little bit um, sort of the the uh, there is no sort of gradation between the two between the dirt and the clean so we're just going to go back over with the same color uh, just slightly just um, quite lightly just to make it less noticeable so kind of get like a two layer effect the ladder will go um, back up in the middle so just um, really want to leave some uh, some mud behind where the ladder will be because that wouldn't obviously get any traffic or uh, any any form of cleaning either and we can use the same color for the whole of the chassis and the bogus as well so while we're there we're going to paint in those as well just while we're watching um, this paint dry um, just want to take this chance to ask that if you've not already subscribed please uh, do subscribe um, and click the bell icon give us a thumbs up if you like this video uh, any comments always great to hear from people it's really really nice it almost is it's it's worth doing just just for the the, the comments um, they've been very pleasant so far so thank you very much for everybody The wheels, um, I'm sure the wheels will come off, but uh, it's just easy just to quickly spin them like this with my thumb and uh, we'll get some color on there as well. Around the side of the axle boxes. There we go. And we'll carry on, we'll do the rest and um, I'll pop back to you in a second. pop the ladders back on um, I glue them in place I glue them underneath it's uh, it's easier that way and uh, less noticeable so for the top we're going to uh, give it a nice coat of uh, dark and sort of old rust um, topped off with some some greasy grime so the first color we're going to choose is um, this is called leather brown it's one of the uh, Vallejo model colors and we're just going to go fairly lightly, we don't want to go too, too mad with this one. Um, this one will extend further down the sides of the tank as if it's run down um, in, the, in the rain. So just some fairly light coats. just trying to blend it in just enough to um, just so it doesn't look like it's just, it's just sitting on the top so we're just going to run it a little bit down the sides make sure we get uh, around that turret as well we need to make sure we uh, cover all the bits of that I'm doing lots of thin coats rather than one big thick coat it's just uh, it's just better that way next color up is um, this is called dark rust this is just a shade darker now I don't um, clean the airbrush out before I put the next color in with these I would just normally um, there's there's not a great deal of paint left in there anyway just top it up with a new color mix it together and um, it just makes a nice little tonal variation 
rather than being a completely new colour, it's just a different shade. Now this darker shade will sit further up the top, won't go down the sides of the tank as much. Um, as does this one which is um, German black brown and this is um, this is darker still so it's a third darker shade similar sorts of thing we may just include uh, an odd run here or there just maybe over the uh, the shell logo just so it looks like there's been a uh, you know some uh, some bigger runs just to a little bit of variation Generally, the middle part where the where the turret is, um, there'll be lots of grime and uh, the rust around the area, I guess, um, where there's been oil spills, lots of traffic, and so on. So we're going to concentrate on that and add some more colour into that middle section. You may have noticed, noticed I've changed, uh, changed my gloves, I've run out of the uh, purple gloves um, and I've seen another couple of models using the black one so I thought well let's go for it and we'll try some black gloves just to mix it up because I'm quite, uh, I'm a bit rogue like that. that's most of the rust done there the final final uh, coat is um, we've just added some uh, black into that um, the black brown the German black brown just to give it a very very dark shade do want to be completely black try not to use um, just plain black on any of the models because black um, doesn't really exist too too much in in nature um, I suppose it has its place but generally speaking if we're looking at grease and oil, it's going to have different colours in it. It's going to have browns and um, greys and maybe even green. So this is um, probably half and half of German black brown um, with black in as well. So again, we're going to concentrate on the on that centre part. Um, is it a turret? I'm not sure what it's called. I'm sure it has got a name. Um, and I'm sure that probably isn't it but uh, we'll call it a turret for now. And with this dark shade, we can do some more runs down the side of the tank. Just to add, add a bit of variation into the um, the, the bogies, I'd normally like this. I would add this um, very dark brown black. Um, just kind of gives like a, a rust splash type effect. Um, so sort of the grease has gone all over the place. So that would that would be darker than you know the, the surrounding mud. This gives another texture. And uh, the uh, it would have maybe splashed up onto the rail or along the side of the chassis as well so that's going to get a little uh, a little blast as well and then with some at the top just to uh, just sort of blend it in a little bit around the bottom 
the ladder where there's been some traffic and uh, muddy footprints or the oily footprints. And then we need to do the same on the sides and on the uh, on the ends as well. So now we get to uh, a first uh, for me. So I'm going to add some graffiti. I've, I've used decals before, um, but I just want to make a little bit different. Now this is called Frisket. This this um, particular film, and it's a very low tack, sort of clear film. You'll see in a moment. It's uh, it's sort of, sort of semi-transparent. And what we've done is uh, on the printer we've printed um, this is the logo we're going for moose and on the uh, printer we've printed in reverse on the back because we, it, it, the ink on the front doesn't stay it just smudges off as you can see that dirty smudge on the front so we print it upside up uh, sorry back to front on the back of the uh, the film and then we need to uh, to cut it out to make our mask and then we're just going to use one you can um, get as complicated and as clever as you like with this this is our first one so we're just going to take it um, slowly so there's our mask which is uh, I say back to front we're cutting from the back from behind of the uh, this frisket and we're just going to cut the middle part out so all the cuts that we do we really want to cut sort of into the middle and we'll take as much time as uh, as we can. Got my brand new blade in there. You'll be pleased to hear. So we're going to not um, include that sort of drop shadow, the blue shadow, the light blue shadow you can see. We're going to paint that on separately. And I will speed this up in a moment because this does go on for quite some time, and uh, it's not something you really want to watch. So uh, speed up of 1,000%. So there we go. There's our mask. So um, so before we use that, now I've missed a bit of film out here, so I do apologise. But um, where you see the light blue sort of drop shadow around uh, that sort of haze around the original logo, we're just going to recreate that. But we're going to use green. Um, for no particular reason so what I did before this uh, this piece here is that I'd held the the logo in the correct or the graffiti in the correct um, the correct way around and I just there's a pencil mark which you you can't really see from here but there's a pencil mark on the wagon and I'm just um, painting around the outside of that so that when the when we put the uh, the mask back on it's got a, a, a green glow around it got it right I think I've missed a bit so I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger okay so we're gonna wait for that to dry which it has and there's the film. Now the film is very low tack, so it's like um, it's like a post-it note. It's that sort of low stickiness. It's not like masking tape, so it's unlikely to peel off the paint. Um, but I've been uh, I'm, I'm being as careful as I can. The main uh, tank um, I've already coated in a in a, in a uh, lacquer from an aerosol just to make sure nothing came off. Um, but to be honest, that probably wasn't a necessary step. But I thought I'd, um, I thought it'd be safe rather than sorry. So we need to stick the frisket down uh, all the way around. Just make sure all the edges are nice and um, stuck down nice and well, stuck down, stuck down nice. That's what I need to be. 
So we don't want any paint to go underneath any overspray um, to creep underneath the film. And because it's curved and we've got some odd shapes in that centre bar, it's a bit tricky, but I think we got it in the end. So the bulk of the um, graffiti is going to be in this dark blue, so the, uh, the sort of drop shadow is in this dark blue. And we're going to fill it in completely with that. This is the first time I've used um, this this film to do this type of uh, technique, so um, it isn't perfect. But um, certainly saying I need to, uh, I'll, I'll get some more practice on. It's good fun. And I'll cut this out by hand as we've seen. So. Um, Possibly might look at a, I think they're called a cricket, which is the little cutter. So you can actually put the frisket film in, and it just cuts it the uh, the bit out for you. So it's much more precise, and um, maybe um, a bit a bit more adventurous in the future. So rather than using uh, masks to do the centre part, I've decided to, um, unwisely probably to um, paint the centre in by hand. Um, this brush probably isn't fine enough and I probably haven't got strong enough glasses on either but um, we'll give it a go I'm gonna again speed this up in just a minute because it is um, it's about 10 minutes long it's really boring so you don't want to watch that now I should have let the uh, the blue layer dry uh, a bit more thoroughly or maybe should have protected it with um, uh, with another lacquer because it does, did start to bleed through in the end so I've had to sort of touch it up a couple of times Now, just out of camera, there is the um, printout of the of the graffiti um, as we want it. So I'm trying to copy that, but not very successfully. It would seem. Now at this point it doesn't look like it makes any sense what I'm actually doing. Um, hopefully it will do in a moment because there are shadows and uh, the characters overlap and there's drop shadows from one character to another and all sorts of things. So it does take a minute um, and it will start to make sense. This is a letter M if you're interested. If you want to skip this part, by the way, there is a, there is a time code down in the description. So all the different sections, if you just want to see this bit or one of the other sections, there's a time code down the bottom there. There we go, finally decided to speed this up. I'm just going to fill in the different letters. There we go, and um, I decided to use the blue again just to uh, tidy the edges up a little bit, just to make them a bit sharper. Um, but some of the colours have bled through again, so it probably wasn't the best uh, best decision. So uh, there is a bit of a bit more tidying up off camera a bit later on.
and just to add a bit more colour so we're using uh, this yellow and just, just some uh, some fill down the bottom and a couple of dots and, a, and the odd star I think So I do clean the um, the outline. I will clean that up again um, off camera just after this uh, this scene, just to make it a little bit neater. So now final stages, um, weathering powders and our, um, our grease. So the couple of powders that you see already in there, that is, um, that particular one there is, I think it's burnt umber. And then the, uh, the um, dark earth um, humbrol powder next to that. And we're gonna add in also um, a dark red ochre for the sort of, um, raw rust. We're just going to use that really sparingly. So I like to uh, put it at the end of the chassis. I think I do that on pretty much all my wagons. Um, maybe it's a trademark. Is that possible? Maybe. And we're just going to dot that in in a few places here and there, just the highlight. As you know, that when we add different powders and then the lacquer eventually, uh, the effect will. Um, will be lessened anyway. And you see that the amount that I've got in the, in the well of the pallet, that's more than enough for this wagon. It probably do two or three wagons. We really don't need that much. Um, so be careful when you use your pallets, just knock it off the brush. Don't use it straight out of the tub uh, because there'll be so much loaded onto your brush. It will just there's more than you would believe. Like that, exactly like that. So um, we need to now try and get that, we'll brush that back as much as we can and add on some darker shades. Try and uh, lessen that effect a little bit. some along the tops as well so around the turret obviously there's a lot of action goes on around there with the grease and the oils um, I'm sure it has some effect on the paintwork that's why it's gone as rusty as it as it has and then just along the top there's just going to be natural sort of fallout from um, particles in the air whether it's going to be still from the tracks or um, grease and oil that's going to be airborne and settling on the top Don't forget if you haven't already subscribed um, please do subscribe it's, it's great that you get to see uh, the videos when they come out it's nice to know that people do like what we do here so uh, please subscribe click the bell icon that way you'll get notified every time I put a new video up and um, give us a thumbs up and please uh, any comments um, always great to hear from them So here's our um, matte lacquer going on. This is the final coat of lacquer now. This just protects all the weathering powders, keeps them in place um, so they don't get dislodged when you handle your model. 
and as I say, it does have an effect where it sort of dulls down the uh, the tones. Uh, they blend in a little bit more, and so the orange will uh, the orange will fade back a little bit. And then this is the AK Interactive um, Axle and Bearing Grease, I think it's called. Uh, the link's down below in the description. Now, I don't like the sort of big runs that some people use on the sides of their tank uh, wagons. I've done it before. I don't like it. I don't think it, the way I do it doesn't, doesn't look particularly natural. But I still need some oil around the turret, if that's what it's called. Um, but we're going to use some grease down there in the uh, in the springs and just a few drops along the rails not sure what that is but that's where it's going to go anyway and uh, just let it sort of seep and it finds its own way capillary action will pull it into different um, areas on the model and it just spreads out makes a makes a nice sort of well greasy looking stain really piece just on the springs there and on the uh, those axle boxes they're not particularly realistic on these older ones but hey ho so that's it done from um, this one to the moose mobile um, it was great fun thanks for watching and we'll have another one um, next week until then have a good weekend